the stock market risk indicator rose sharply by more than 11% in reaction to the March 10 Silicon Valley failure. Wall Street is terrifying amid fears of a market crash and a stock market recession. Silicon Valley Bank isn't like any other bank. It deals directly with new and promising startup companies, particularly technology companies. Silicon Valley Bank's collapse set off a panic not seen since the days of the financial meltdown of 2008, triggering urgent calls for calm and extraordinary action. Stay until the end, because in this video, we are going to show you what happened with the closure of Silicon Valley Bank. But before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to Financial Countdown and ring the bell to be notified when new content comes out. The bank failure occurred by accident, but it was long expected. Last year, the US Federal Reserve implemented a series of highly aggressive monetary policies. To fight against the rising inflation rate, the US central banks increased their key interest rates by an average of 50 to 75 at each meeting. The central bank's reaction and plan to combat inflation were late, and inflation's effects on the global supply market were already devastating. And you can't find lumber to build a new home. Well, you can't find products to stock the shelves of your small business. You can't find holiday gifts. Well, it's all because of the global supply chain crisis that's happening right now. It's an economic fallout from the pandemic. And President Biden announced a package of measures to hopefully break the log jam and get things moving again. Our Kaylee Hartung is in Los Angeles and has been on this story since the very beginning. Hi, Kaylee. So, Kira, as we talk about this crisis in the supply chain that's threatening holiday shopping, here's your visual. Just as toys and bikes and sneakers become harder to find on the shelves, there's a good chance they're piled up in some of these containers. I just spoke with the international longshoremen and warehouse union leaders who tell me some of these containers have been here for weeks. Some of these companies are using this dock space just like a warehouse and can't move their product. They need truck drivers to show up. They need orders to be put in to get these goods onto the highway and into stores. So how did we really get here? Silicon Valley Bank primarily serves startup companies in the technology industry. Therefore, it may be more vulnerable to higher interest rates than other banks. This is because many of its clients are early stage companies that may have limited cash reserves and be more sensitive to changes in borrowing costs. So, the bank was really planning for long-term investments by buying billions of dollars worth of bonds over the past couple of years. However, the Russian military operation and the start of the war changed everything. The war had added to the inflationary pressures, and the market burned with higher prices on a global scale. With higher consumer products and higher interest rates, venture capital funding starts to dry up. America is fighting on two fronts. At home, it's inflation and rising prices. Abroad, it's helping Ukrainians defend their democracy and feeding those who are left hungry around the world because Russian atrocities exist. Putin's war has, has, has cut off critical sources of food. That was U.S. President Joe Biden there declaring that America is at war with inflation and rising consumer prices. And that, of course, is not news to anyone. And just when most of the world was recovering from the economic downturn caused by the pandemic, Vladimir Putin launched his invasion of Ukraine. And that new disruption reversed the recovery in some places, and it pushed up the cost of living practically everywhere. Consider your grocery bill. Ukraine and Russia are the breadbaskets for much of the world, but there's little farming being done near the front lines. That means prices for wheat, barley, corn, they've skyrocketed. The same companies have forced the Silicon Valley Bank to sell its bonds to fulfill its startup company's financial needs. And the worst part is to sell them at a loss. Higher interest rates can have a range of effects on the financial markets, including Wall Street. One of the most direct effects is on bond prices. As interest rates rise, the value of existing bonds falls since they become less attractive compared to newer bonds with higher yields. Higher interest rates typically mean that borrowing money becomes more expensive. 
This can make it more costly for venture capital firms to finance their investments, as they may need to pay higher interest rates on loans or issue more expensive debt securities. This can put pressure on the returns that venture capital firms can generate and may make them more selective in their investment decisions. As a result, the Silicon Valley Bank sold its bonds and let its customers withdraw their deposits over the past year. These changes in the market macroeconomics led to the second largest financial institution tragedy in the history of the US economy and the first bank failure since 2008. During the pandemic, Silicon Valley Bank had gotten all of these deposits. Their deposits tripled. It was a huge, huge, huge influx. And they did what banks do. They took some of the deposits and made loans, but they also invested a lot of them in securities, which are pretty safe. Some issues had been bubbling under the surface at Silicon Valley Bank since the Federal Reserve started raising rates. When rates rose, the bonds fell in value. It's not a big problem for you unless you have to go and sell the bonds. But deposits started leaving the bank faster than they anticipated. And they had to sell their bonds and take a very big loss. The bank made an announcement on Wednesday night that it needed to raise capital and was planning to do that the next day. The investors completely freaked out, sold off the stock, and then a bank run started where people tried to withdraw $42 billion in deposits just in that one day. And that said, market analysis fears the spread of the Silicon Valley contagion particularly if the failure reaches the First Republic Bank. Generally speaking, the two banks are completely different, yet they both operate independently, and they both focus on serving high net worth clients and their commitment to providing personalized banking and financial services. In that case, if the Silicon Valley Bank failure spreads to other banks, the market recession probabilities will skyrocket and the turmoil will cause the shoppers decline in the United States. Stock market, the shoppers decline for the first time since 2008. In the money market, the S&P 500 indexes rose sharply. The indexes are considered a stock market risk indicator. The higher it goes, the worse things can get. Wall Street's main indexes have turned bearish since the Silicon Valley Bank file and there are talks that the United States Central Bank might be forced to pause raising its key interest rates. Overall, higher interest rates can have a range of effects on the financial markets, including Wall Street. One of the most direct effects is on bond prices. As interest rates rise, the value of existing bonds falls since they become less attractive compared to newer bonds with higher yields. This can lead to losses for bond investors and cause bond prices to decline. Higher interest rates can also make it more expensive for companies to borrow money, which could lead to a decline in corporate earnings and a pullback in stock prices. Don't forget to leave us a big like. Your opinion is very important for us. You can leave it in the comment box below this video. Thank you for watching.